Hi, uh, I'm going to talk about um, something regarding uh, translation of functions in Desmos. I'm going to read in an image, and it turns out it's something I've uh, something I've saved. I forget where it is. I think I have it here. Yeah, stuffringgate.jpg. And as you can see, I can make it bigger. It's not a good head-on shot of the Dufferin Gate. And hold on. Uh, yeah, I guess the center of the photo could be the origin, but I'm not exactly entirely sure. That's the center of the photograph itself, but uh, mind you, it shouldn't matter. Maybe what if we had the vertex of the parabola, say, somewhere here? This is the point minus two, four. Um, so let's see if we can transform a function to fit that parabola. This is the Dufferin Gate, and you can see uh, people are wearing strange clothes because it was the 1960s, the early 1960s, probably the year 1960. And um, the Dufferin Gate is not a, it's not like some of the arches made recently. Some of the arches made recently, like the uh, Caternary Arch over at St. Louis, Missouri, it's called the Gateway Arch, looks like this. and. Um, you can see it's not exactly a parabola, is it? It is a curve, and a catenary arch is one of the most sturdy arch-like structures that you can have. And as you can see, this arch just dwarfs all these all these tall buildings uh, surrounding it. Well, over here, you can see this uh, Dufferin Gate is not much bigger than this four-story apartment building over here uh, in the background. So it's not a very tall arch by North American standards, but it's ours and it's half decent. We're going to divide a function f at x equals x squared. This will be our parent function. As you can see here, f at x squared is pointing the wrong way. It's going up and it's the vertex is nowhere near this vertex. Um, but by some strange coincidence, the vertex is passing through negative 2, 4. Okay, well, let's see if we can translate um, translate this function. So let's define a, another function, g of x. And first of all, we're just going to say negative f of x. And let's see what happens. Well, then we get a blue curve. So we had a red curve representing x squared. We'll, um, we'll just make it disappear for a minute. So we have a minus f of x, or we can say a multiplied by f of x. And if we add a slider for a, we can see that, OK, we can make it stretch. We can make it compress. We can do lots of stuff with it. For now, I'm just going to leave it at a equals 1, which was the default value. Um, well, okay, that doesn't do much for our the position of our vertex. I think if we add 2 here, we move the vertex right underneath the vertex that we're supposed to have. And if we shift it up by 4, yeah, they suddenly match. All right, so x plus 2 plus 4. Mind you, if I move minus d plus c, we can make sliders for these. So we said that c was equal to plus, we had x plus 2, but because we have minus d in the formula, we have to make it into minus 2. So here we go. Oh, sorry. Went the wrong way. Um, it's 4. We have to go up to 4. Okay. Uh, I meant this. Oh, no, that's a. It's d that we want to make into minus 2. There we go. OK, so now the vertices match, more or less. Uh, one of the disadvantages of this parabola is that it's not, not a head-on shot. Um, we also, um, let's see if we can uh, compress a. It looks like we can looks like we can do 0.3. So if a is 0.3, it kind of looks like 
that uh, parabola more or less matches up with our parabola. Um, so what is that parabola? So, you know, you take a look at what we did. We did, um, we did, what's negative A? Negative 0 0.3 times F of X plus minus negative 2. So it's X plus 2 and then plus 4. So now we got another another thing there and that's kind of the that's kind of the function notation we ended up with but what does that mean for x squared it's like 0 0.3 times x squared well that doesn't do much maybe we need to make x into a um, x plus 2 oh that that's good and then if we add 4 to the whole function we wind up with that again now if you expand this, you will get a parabola which matches the parabola of the Dufferin gate. Drawn to scale, of course, um, and um, you should be able to expand that and figure out what it is. Now, this is using combinations. This is an example of combinations of transformations. So here we're starting off with the equation f at x equals x squared as we knew that was our that was our parent function then we started to manipulate it using the various manipulations that are available to us we defined a, a different function g of x as being transformations on the parent function f at x and we said that it was a f of x minus d plus c so this is what we're transforming. Notice that this is only using function notation. That's an important thing to know. This is function notation. Just like this is function notation and that's function notation. But this is a formula, whereas this is not because it's got an f here. So we're really multiplying f, f at x by a, but we're also taking away d from x itself and we're adding c to the entire function. That's kind of the idea. So we know that f at x equals x squared. So the way we the way we think of this is we start off with well it's not x squared that we're worried about it's x minus d all squared. The whole function is multiplied by a and we're adding c to it. Now in this case, we had a, a number of things. A was negative 0 0.3. X equals 2, not minus 2, because this D is already negative. So X is positive. Or sorry, not X, D. D is positive, not X. So D is positive because there's a minus sign in front of the D. And we do mean X minus 2 when we finish this. And this C here was a translation of four units up. So, so then C was plus four, positive four. So then we have negative 0 0.3 X minus two squared plus four. Now, what is this function? Well, we can expand this to standard form as follows. We take the x minus 2, we take the x minus 2, and we square it. Because we have to use bed mass, we have to work with what's in the brackets first. So that means we still need, we still need to reckon with 0 0.3, but we'll save that for later. And then we have x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's what x minus 2 expands to, right? x times x is x squared. And then we have negative 2x twice to get negative 4x, and negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And then we have another positive 4 added. Notice that this is added outside the bracket, so we don't deal with it quite yet. We have to still deal with the multiplication of 0.3, negative 0.3. So we end up with negative 0.3x squared. Now what's 0 point, negative 0.3 times negative 4? 
uh, I think it's 1.2, so it's going to be positive 1.2 because a negative times a negative is a positive. Uh, so it's positive 1.2x. And then negative 0.3 times 4 is now going to be negative 1.2, and we're adding 4. Now we can add these two together to finally simplify this. Negative 0.3x squared plus 1.2x. Now this is like 4 minus 1.2. So that's 3, so that'll be plus 2.8. Okay, and that's what we end up with for g of x. I find that students have the hardest time going from here to here. Because some people think, that must be the formula. How come I didn't square this? <laughs> you know? Uh, so they kind of look at this. This looks kind of strange because it's not squared. But then again, f of, this is really just another form of f of x, right? Because this is f of x minus d. f of x is already, the whole f of x is x squared. So f of x minus d is x minus d all squared. Ah, okay. And then if I multiply the whole function by a, that means that I multiply x minus d by a, and if I add c to the function, it looks like this. Okay, so the formula is more like this at the beginning, and then we do our substitutions. We just plug everything in, and then do an expansion and gather our like terms. So that's that's basically the formula for that picture of the Dufferin gate that we had, which we moved an arbitrary distance away from the origin.